Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Metropolis Radio, and holy shit, I don't think uh, I don't think Hollywood is going to learn its lesson from uh, from its expansion into China. Uh, this article coming from Deadline: Saudi Arabia tipped to become a billion dollar box office market by 2025. What? What? Wh- wh- why? Why would Hollywood studios want to be expanding into Saudi Arabia? Look what happened when the WWE launched the Crown Jewel. You know, re- remember how fucking controversial that was. You know, the it, it, the the first Crown Jewel, at least. I don't know about I don't know about the other. I don't know about the other two. But it basically became, you know, oh, well, we're going to play with our wrestling figures and, you know, and people can come in and, and watch the show. Oh, you want to see female wrestlers like Becky Lynch or Sasha Banks? Well, too bad. They weren't allowed. They weren't allowed to perform at the Crown Jewel. Oh, so so why, why, why would they be looking to expand? Anyway, let's dig into this article from Deadline. Came out just a couple of days ago. Uh, when Saudi Arabia announced it was opening movie theaters for the first time in 35 years back in late 2017, there was excitement from international exhibitors and Hollywood studios who saw a fertile new market of opportunity. Of course they fucking did, like like they did with China, and then now that's starting to come back and bite them in the ass. So the faster that they can separate from China, the better. I they're they're basically they're basically going from one PR disaster to another PR disaster at this point. Importantly, 70% of the kingdom's 34 million, popu- 34 million population is under 30 and has money to spend. Uh, and spend they have with impressive box office progression. From April 2018 through late December this year, 2021, grosses reached over $454 million per comm score. Even with the COVID shutdown in 2020, that year saw a 26% increase on 2019. This year so far is already 85% bigger than last at about $230 million. Saudi currently ranks as the number 14 global market, although that comes with an asterisk given COVID impact elsewhere. Says one international distribution exec of Saudi's potential, quote, it's going to be really important. It's going to be a billion dollar market. High ticket prices, about $16 to $18 each, will also help push it ahead. But how, how, how much is Saudi Arabia keeping of that, of that high ticket price? Because remember, over in China, they keep 75% of that ticket price. So, you know, okay, you're going to expand into Saudi Arabia, but if it's just another China scenario where they keep a majority of the money, you're making absolutely no money and you're getting a shit ton of criticism stateside or wherever or wherever your home country is, whether that be England, France, Germany, Belgium, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you know, you're receiving all this criticism for expanding into Saudi Arabia like you expanded into China. Is it really worth the pence you're going to be fucking making? Uh, at, at some point, the bad PR is going to outweigh any potential financial reward because the bad PR itself could do a fuck ton more damage than, than, you know, than not expanding into that market, in my opinion. Um, Adon Quinn, who is deputy CEO of major exhibitor Mount Malvi Cinemas, expects the $1 billion milestone to be crossed by 2025, earlier than, than initial expectations. Quote, we see hitting the 1500 screen mark around 2025, 2026. Once we get to that screen level, that's when those numbers can be realistically achieved, Quinn said. Mohammed uh, Mohammed Al, uh, Mohammed Alashimi, country head for K, for for KSA and, and Majid Al Futaim, uh, who owns the Vox chain, was a bit more bullish, expecting the one billion dollar threshold to be, to to be cro- to be crossed late in twenty twenty four. Whenever it hits, it it will it will rep a staggering nine hundred and twenty six percent growth from twenty nineteen, the first full year the market was open. While cinemas offer a premium experience, the kingdom remains under-screened with about 330 in operation. The initial fanfare of potential foreign investment cooled in the wake of 2018 of the 2018 murder of journalist Jamal. I'm going to mispronounce his name, but I do remember the story. The uh, the murder of journalist uh, Jamal was was it Ka- uh, Kashagi or something? I think it was pronounced uh, Kashagi. I, I I know I I might be butchering that name, but I do I do rem- I do remember that at the at the time. And during the pandemic, exhibitors became intensely focused on their core areas of business, which slowed expansion. But now we hear ambitious plans are being formulated to build out cinema infrastructure, says one international distribution exec, quote, I hope the pandemic doesn't sidetrack that because in 12 to 18 months, there would be a lot more theaters. 
The Emirates-based Vox recently opened its 15th multiplex in the kingdom and now has 154 screens, while Movie just opened its 18th site. Exhibition giant AMC is also active in the market with roughly 65 screens. CEO Adam Aran recently told the Wall Street Journal that the pandemic slowed the pace of its cinema openings, but that the company is perfectly happy and content with its expansion. Ignace Lahoud, a Disney veteran who is now CEO of Vox owner Majid Al-Futim, told Deadline, quote, by all metrics, there's still a lot, a lot of room for growth. Vox, which is also a distributor, is currently in six cities and has plans to continue expanding, notably in the tier two areas, which are expected to lean toward local fare. Quote, there will be a gradual growth in the share of Arabic content. It's important to not be fully dependent on Hollywood, Lahoud contends. To wit, Egyptian comedy, a stand worthy of men. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that filmmaker's name because I am going to butcher the fuck out of it. So I'm just going to move on. Is the biggest title since movie theaters were reinstated, grossing over $15 million this year and with the sequel coming in 2022. In 2020, 10% of the movies released were Arabic language and accounted for 28% of the box office, we're told. In terms of Hollywood, tastes run primarily to blockbuster and indie action, superhero slash comics if the, if the mythology is familiar, and G-rated family fare. A nice surprise recently has been the performance of Warner Brothers' adult skewing drama King Richard, which counts Saudi as its lead overseas market. That I am truly shocked. Uh, studio titles are released by regional outfits including Vox, Italia, Four Stars, and, uh, and others which handle local marketing. We're told that the market is not yet big enough for the studios to set up their own operations and that the overhead makes it a bit daunting, though it may be something to look at in the future. But again, what is going to be that cost, that 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 damage to PR, that damage to public relations? What is that cost of expanding? Is it is it worth is it worth expanding into Saudi Arabia? Because look at look at the hit that WWE took. You know, after they after they announced it, their even their their freaking stock took a dip at, at at one point after the um after the announcement. And then you had guys like Daniel Bryan and John Cena at the time pull out and saying, "Fuck no, I'm not I'm not I'm not getting involved in this." And it's not even like the crown jewel was even that that well received. You know, your main event was D Generation X versus the Brothers of Destruction. Three of the four of, of your main eventers were over the age of freaking 50. And on top and on top of that, you know, you had you had Shawn Michaels basically go out there and basically ruin his reputation in his career. Because for years upon years, he had openly said there was there is no amount of money that is going to compel me to get back in the ring. Yet he's going to go main event at this bullshit event in Saudi Arabia. For I, gu I guarantee you, the I guarantee you the money was too good. But still, you know, Shawn Michaels still ruined his own name and reputation by by pulling that shit. Anyway, getting getting back to this, um, in all per com score, the top ten Hollywood films from April twenty eighteen to today. You know, in Saudi Arabia are Cruella at $9.14 million, Joker, $8.9 million, Bad Boys for Life, $8.8 .8 million, Wrath of Man, $8.3 million, No Time to Die, $8.1 million, Fast and Furious 9, $7.8 million, Honest Thief, $7.1 million, Venom Let There Be Carnage, $6.7 million, Tenet, $6.24 million, and A Quiet Place Part 2 at $6.2 million. On its first weekend, Sony slash Marvel Spider-Man No Way Home had the biggest opening ever in the kingdom with $5.2 million. Quinn, Quinn told me, this is, the, this is the author speaking, not me. Quinn told me that the first day of No Way Home was 190% bigger than any previous launch day at movie cinemas. He said, quote, we strongly believe in the market, but like every other market, it is reliant on content. After a strong summer, a dip in a dip in KSA admissions fell a dip in KSA admissions during the fall may, may be attributable to a lack of blockbuster titles, while other entertainment activities are sprouting up. One distribution exec tells us that the market is quote unquote on steroids. Everything is happening, everything is happening there. That includes concerts. Justin Bieber performed in Jetta in Jetta this month. And the, and the recent Formula One and the recent Formula One racing event, the likes which were quote unthinkable three or four years ago, Lahoud said, adding, clearly there is an awakening and hunger for opening and le for opening and leisure entertainment, art and culture, and yet human rights issues remain a concern. 
Under his Vision 2030 plan, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salam, uh, Salman has been, has been seen as, prog as a progressive, but the kingdom still does not recognize LGBTQ rights, for example. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, can't you be thrown in prison in Saudi Arabia? <coughs> God damn it. Mm. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I think I think you can be thrown in prison for being gay in Saudi Arabia. Uh, if not, you know, it, I, I believe it's. I think I think best case scenario you get sent to prison. I think worst case scenario, yo. Know, let let's just say let let let's just say that um that uh that that you get a that you get a bunch of stones thrown at you if you know what I mean. You know, very 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 medieval form of punishment. Um. As the recent Red Sea International Film Festival kicked off, providing a showcase for the kingdom's desire to embrace culture, we revealed that Steven Spielberg's West Side Story was not given a distribution certificate in the market, ostensibly because it featured a transgender character. S surprise, surprise! It's Saudi fucking Arabia. What are you ex what 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 are you expecting? Similarly, in early November, Disney was at, was asked to make edits to Eternals, which included a same-sex kiss, in order to pass censorship. The studio refused, and Eternals was not released. Eternals might have done upwards of $5 million in the kingdom, so that's a small pinch, but West Side Story may not have reached $1 million. But again, you know, but, but again may, maybe... Maybe Disney and Marvel determined that 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 five million dollars was not worth all the bad press that they would have gotten for expanding into Saudi Arabia because boy oh boy Disney's expansion into China is uh, really not helping them on the PR front these days. Uh, if Saudi continues to grow to grow a pace in the coming years, that could result in a bigger impact to a film's box office if it runs afoul of censors. But we, but we are assured that studios are accustomed to facing these types of issues across the Middle East and in some Southeast Asian markets that, that have strict rules based on religious beliefs. In most cases, films are either not released or intimacy, or intimacy is eliminated across the board. One distribution executive familiar with Saudi told us they, they believe censorship will ease, but not overnight. I guarantee you they thought the exact same thing with fucking China and it didn't fucking happen. Now it's biting them in the fucking ass. So is it so, you know, the, it's, it's the whole thing of fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, sh shame on me. You know, why, why, why would you, why would you expand into, Sa into Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia might be doing this for the, for the sake of Saudi Arabia. Like China wanted to open its doors to the Western film industry for the, for the sake, for the sake of fucking China. Let's be honest. Quote, things are going to be done in an unconventional way. This is a big step to them. Lahoud said, quote, as exhibitors, our goal is to be able to cater to as, ma to as many movies as possible, but we also have to abide by local laws, and censorship is a reality in this part of the world. We do our best to navigate those waters. He remains optimistic, quote, four years ago, there was no cinema at all, and now you can go and take your boyfriend or girlfriend. Three years ago, we still had segregation. I think that's fantastic progress. This is a journey. But again... You know, judging ba based on the, the based on the Hollywood studios' expansion expansion into China, you know, are they they're they're basically just trading one PR disaster for another at this point. That's my that and that and that's and that is my firm prediction. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I I don't think Saudi Arabia is gonna re is gonna really back down from 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 its censorship. Well, I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna be a hundred percent. I'm just gonna be a hundred percent honest here. And guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. If you stuck around this long, thanks so much for doing so. And if you've been following me long enough, you know I am terrible at ending these videos. So I will just see you guys on uh, next time.